Hi, it's Kim from Expressions of the Universe with your weekly wisdom for January 19th through January 25th. And we're welcoming the sun moving into Aquarius. Woohoo! Finally, maybe some of the heavy, dense earth energy will lighten. And I feel like things will lighten and brighten. And my theme for the month is sparks. Expect sparks. Sparks are flying. So we have a new moon in Aquarius this week at four degrees, followed by the Chinese Lunar New Year, Year of the Metal Rat. And I keep thinking of like some 80s metal dude. Like, um, the metal rat is, it's not usually the most auspicious year, or metal rats aren't the most auspicious people. They're usually not that lucky. However, we can expect abundance because they are extremely fertile. Um, there's a lack of self-confidence, so we're going to have to work on that and our courage this year. They're very cunning. They're slick, they're sly, um, they're really hard workers, so I expect that we'll be working very hard, but it will pay off this year, so that's not really a bad thing. Uh, there will be plenty of opportunities, but we have to seize the day, carpe diem. So, and that's one thing that the rat does, is it knows when there's a great opportunity and it seizes that. Um, I don't see with the rat energy, really uh, people will have a lack of trust in a lot of people. Uh, so communication is really key this year. And it could be difficult to step up into leadership roles. So there's definitely an independence and a type of freedom that's associated with the rat energy. So I think a lot of us are really going it alone this year. This is a building year and we will have to work really hard and start, you know, building things from the ground up. Now for all of you, I have our cards for the week, our crystal for the week, and I'm going to pull cards for each sign for the new moon. I just wanted to show you the artwork in this calendar for January. It's exceptional. And this is the Llewellyn calendar, not the typical Maynard that I love. And then this was, this is the Aquarius energy. <clears throat> so I haven't done this for a little while. I had a really powerful message come through yesterday while I was doing some readings at my friend Honey's shop. And I will share that with you. Um, it was actually a message that came through from a dog, I believe, and, but it was extremely powerful. Uh, I've been very busy, which I'm very fortunate, but I haven't had a whole lot of time to do my blog. Oh, I have to do a shout out for myself. So I became an Amazon affiliate and I'm on waiting for approval to be an Etsy affiliate. And what does that mean? I can find and offer all of you products from my webpage at really great prices. Um, I signed up for Etsy because Amazon didn't have the best uh, quality for crystals or jewelry. Some things are okay, but Etsy is so much better. So stay tuned. But if you want to purchase anything through Amazon, Go to my website at expressionsoftheuniverse.com because even if I don't have it listed there, there's a little search bar, there's a 50% off coupon link in there and uh, you will get a discount. You'll get my discount and it will help the Expressions of the Universe page. So I haven't done a little black bag in a, in a while. So let's see what our theme word for the week is. Hi, Chrissy. Hi. Hi. So my daughter's over here waiting to get to the kitchen. Are Go you ahead. Live? Uh, no, I'm not live. Oh, okay. I'm recording, but you know, I'm not going to edit. Oh. 
Okay, so I love this. I love this for us. It's purification. At least I think that's what it says. Yeah, it's purification. And I think that goes perfectly with the powerful message that I'm going to tell you about after I pull the cards for all of you. But purification, it really is about cleansing body, mind, and spirit, getting rid of anything that doesn't serve anymore. I still really need to clean my bedroom desperately um, and put things away and clear out all of that clutter. But this is also emotional clutter. Uh, I was speaking with an energetic nutritionalist yesterday and she was indicating like it's great that we eat well and we take care of our bodies but if we don't deal with the emotional side of what's usually causing the dis-ease in our bodies then it's never going to go away no matter how well you eat how much you exercise the vitamins that you take you have to deal with the emotional part of it and clear that for total optimal health. Now this week's crystal card that I pulled is the diamond. And obviously I don't have a ginormous diamond. So we're just gonna go with this beautiful, beautiful depiction of it. And it immediately says to me that Look how beautiful things under pressure for a long period of time can turn out. Um, at least, you know, like that's what comes to mind immediately. And also to be patient. I don't know what really the full meaning is. This is just my interpretation. But I'm thinking like patience is definitely needed. And I'm hearing diamond in the rough. So don't look and judge things because they could be a diamond in the rough. And that really kind of goes with my, my powerful message that I got. So I want to pull the three anchor cards for the week. I know I'm recording this late. It's a holiday, uh, holiday week. So I'm a little bit off and I have been busy and I'm not going to apologize. It is what it is. So I think I'm only going to I'm only going to pull maybe two cards from here because I'm going to pull cards for all the signs for the moon. All right. So oh, I love this. Horse comes up first. Maybe I'll post that tonight. Uh, this speaks of freedom and being free, being independent. And I like, I love that because that's definitely Aquarius energy. And let's do a little shuffle. You see my beagle back there? Hi, Bar. Hi, Pig. It's Barley Baby Beagle Brown. The beagliest brown of all the town. Okay. This card will come in on Wednesday, and it's Burden. Burden? Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen this card. Ha, ha, ha. Burden. And I think this is good. This is a good reminder for us to tap into and think about what our burdens are or what we consider to be our burdens. Uh, this is something that we will have to shed. Uh, obviously in order for us to expand and grow so there's a grove of birch trees and i'm sure that that's tied and linked to the burden card somehow what does this say i can't really see it's card number 43 if that means anything to anybody but the card is burden so i think we're going to be exploring uh, the weight that we're carrying in our body, physically, mentally, spiritually, and we're going to be shedding some burdens this week. Okay, and then the card that will come in right on Friday, the full moon. 
Oh, I'm sorry, the new moon. The new moon in Aquarius. Oh, it's stag. Pride and leadership. And I like that. Because you're going to stand with pride and leadership. This is not boastful energy. This is quiet power. Uh, the stag, you, you probably don't even know when you're walking through the woods that there's a stag probably only feet from you because they stand in quiet power. They don't need to be boastful. They don't need to be loud um, for everybody to know what their power is. All right. Now for all of the signs, I am going to use Colette Baron Reed's Goddess Power Deck. If anybody's interested, I will post this in this week's blog. I'll post a little, um, a little discounted access to this, so you can check that out on my website at expressionsoftheuniverse.com. And I really love this deck. It's empowering, and I think we need that at this time. So I'm just going to pull from the top of the deck and go right down starting with Aries. Okay, I really feel like I want to cut these. All right, there we go. Aries. Bronwyn, forgiveness. So this is what you're focusing on with this new moon on Friday, January 24th. Aries, sun signs, rising signs, and moons, forgiveness. Taurus, rising signs, sun signs, rising signs, and moons. Aphrodite, romantic love. I love that. All right, Gemini's, Ain, Ain, it's adaptability flexibility so I think for a lot of Gemini's there are going to be uh, possible some tumultuous times there's gonna this is gonna be a crazy year for Gemini Sun signs rising signs and moon so you're going to have to be extremely adaptable extremely flexible cancer Sun signs rising signs and moons uh, Lakshmi and I love Lakshmi and this is fortune and I love that because I'm a Cancer rising, I'm a Gemini sun and a Leo moon, but Lakshmi, she's gorgeous. This is for the Cancers. Now for the Leo sun signs, rising signs and moons, we have Kuan Yin, another one of my favorites. And this is about compassion. And I, I really especially love this, but this is gonna be compassion towards yourselves, Leos. I think it's going to be extremely important to exercise deep compassion for yourselves so that you can have it for others. Virgos, Kali, liberation. Now Kali means that there's some big changes and transformations coming your way. Kali comes in to clear out whatever it is that you haven't been taking care of and it, she sweeps things away. Um, Kali is kind of scary when she shows up, but she winds up being a blessing in disguise. Libras, Isis, and I love this. This is rebirth. And she is saying for the Libra sun signs, rising signs and moons, that it's almost going to be like a fresh start starting this Friday. You're going to get a boost of energy, rebirth, new ideas. And I love that for the Libras. Scorpios, Ishtar, communion. And Ishtar is, for the Scorpios, this is a communion of friends, partnerships, uh, marriages, coming together with the right groups and the right people, the right connections. So I love that for you, Scorpios. Can you say something? Yes. About ISIS? Yeah. So my daughter wants to say something about Isis. Come he here. Can, he can say you look adorable, so come on. Come on over. No. You do. Come on, cutie. Come sit over here. All right, so who is Isis? <laughs> um, Isis is for Libras, like Eddie. 
Okay, so the thing about Isis, if you know anything about Greek mythology, is Osiris, which is her husband, was chopped up into lots of pieces and they Holy were sprinkled, Osiris. Yeah, sprinkled all over Egypt. Oh. And she went and found every all single the piece, piece. Yes, and put and them put together. together. Yes. Oh, I love that. So it's actually really indicative to kind of what you're saying of like maybe your plans coming together or she's going to somehow heal you to make you whole. Oh, I like that. That's for the so, Libra, sun signs, yeah. rising signs and moons. Yeah. Thanks, B. You're welcome. <laughs> it's always nice to, you know, get some extra wisdom, right? All right. So we are on Sagittarius and this is gorgeous. Now this is Iris. And I love Iris. And this is communication. And the Sages sometimes really do need to learn how to communicate a little bit better. But communication, I'm hearing, this is about listening to another uh, as opposed to what I do. Waiting, waiting for my turn to answer. So I'm a really bad listener and I'm constantly always working on that to improve. Um, but yes, Iris is about communication and improving that. Capricorns, uh, it's Epona and it's wise leadership. So this is telling me immediately, you have to lead by example, Capricorns. You just had a huge transit move through your sign. Uh, some of it is still lingering. We're not out of the woods. The uh, stellium in Capricorn is going to last well into next year. So you have a, a whole entire year, you know, give or take, to work on being a wise leader and showing and leading by example. Aquarius. Aquarius is Danu, and this is assurance. And I like this. This is so beautiful. And she almost looks like a water bearer. Danu is saying, you can be assured, you can trust and have faith that everything is going to work out for you exactly the way that you're hoping and wishing that it will. And this is the Aquarius new moon at four degrees. This is about you coming into the place of where you truly belong, where you truly fit in, finding your niche and settling into that comfortableness that you've been longing for for a long time. Wait, can I add something for that too? You know Daniel? Because, uh, no. <coughs> no, but you're, more, she's an Aquarius. I know about Aquarius. Okay. And um, How does that feel for you, Danu? And yes. assurance and trust and faith and knowing right. that you're finding your place of belonging and your niche and right. fitting in and, and what, being comfortable. What totally came off in my head is because I'm, I think most Aquarians are like me where we're big kind of dreamers. We're in the air. We always think like 12 steps ahead. Right. So my, I, it just popped in my head, but I just want to say that keep in mind that that place might not be where you think it is. Oh, I love that. You know? Yeah. Because you're going to find, your, you're going to always be where you're supposed to be, but that might not be where you think it's supposed to be. Right. Because you're thinking 12 steps ahead. Right. And also you're having a vision of how you want it to be. Right. And the way that you're envisioning it may not necessarily be what is most beneficial for you. Exactly. But the universe yes. always knows so what you, is. You really have to have faith that you are supposed, you're on track and you're always where you're supposed to be, even if you don't think that that's where you want to be. Right. Right? I love that. Thank yeah. you, B. Love you. Give me a kiss. Yeah. <laughs> and then last but not least, Pisces. Oh, this is so pretty. Look at this card. I mean, all these cards are gorgeous. This is Athena, and this is about knowledge. And look at that. So you have an owl totem, which is automatically tells me wisdom and being wise and strategic. And, and strategic. So this is Athena crystal for the Pisces. Yeah. She's not just the goddess of war. She's, that's why I said strategy. Oh, she's the goddess of war. So no. that's why crystal said strategy. Well, no, 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 no. 
it's more than just war. It's strategy. It's the oh, because the system. knowledge. Right. The not right. Okay, so the knowledge to know when to strike, when not to what, strike, but what to when to do the right thing and right when to step back right. and do the right thing by not. Yes. Yeah. That's what I mean. So this is about being wise and smart and uh, not being a smart ass. So I think that's all I have for all of you for this week. Oh, so my powerful message, and I can't find my little, my little stylus is missing. There it is. Um, the powerful message that I had come through me, to me through, I think, a dog. Um, I'm going to say it's a dog. It has to do with um, the way that we're perceiving things, the way that we're looking at things and the way we label things, the way we label people. And, okay, so it starts with being extremely present in the now, in the right now, right moment. But um, what I've noticed is, is that a lot of anger, a lot of judgment, amongst people and the epiphany that came to me from this dog was you know when we are angry when we are labeling when we were when we are uh pointing the finger at other people it's we're actually angry and pointing the finger at what is inside of ourselves and the reason why it came through from a dog is the lesson was when you're looking at an animal, and this I guess maybe goes for people that love animals or whether you own them uh, or you just admire them out in nature, people that truly love animals and they love watching them play, similar to me, I love watching birds and foxes and squirrels and rabbits run around. I love my dogs and my cats. And I get so much joy out of just watching and observing them. It's because in that moment is the best part of myself that is shining through. And I'm in that moment seeing it in them. It's like, you know, that unconditional love. It's that highest soul spirit of ourselves when we're in that moment of just loving our animals or loving nature but then when we go out into the world and we have to be with humans who do not really know unconditional love they're striving for it all of the time um and also humans have egos where animals do not we're seeing ugliness in other people but it's actually the ugliness that's within us that is pointing that out. So think about when you're observing and playing with your animals or you're out in nature and you're watching birds flit around or squirrels eating a little nut or you know whatever it is. And think about the joy that you're feeling when you're watching them. That's the best part of you. And this is how you should be observing other people and because that is within you and that is within them as well. If you could just sit in the moment and not label or judge anybody and just, you know, see all the goodness that's within them because everybody does have goodness within them, even if it's a very small amount. So this will help us to love and heal and be kinder to everybody in the world. So. I hope that that message translated well. I don't think it came out exactly the way that I got it, but it was pretty close. But I, I hope you got that. Um, anyway, so be sure to stay tuned for my Chinese New Year of the Metal Rat blog. I will post these decks, a little link for you if you're interested in purchasing them. You will get a discount or even go on my webpage to my shop. You can go into my Amazon shop. I will have an Etsy shop soon. 
like I said, you will get a discount. You'll get a better price than you would on your own. Um, and even though it's maybe only a, a few pennies here and there, it does help out expressions of the universe. What else do I have, Bar? I don't know. I got to get their dinners. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, please share it with your friends. Be sure to subscribe, give me some thumbs up, comment me, because I love that. And check me out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, my website, and I'm on Pinterest too, and Twitter. I guess that's it. Until next week, happy new moon. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Can't turn it off. It won't turn off.